We're quickly trying to look at different types of immunofluorescence and basically just talk briefly on um, what they are, okay, and how they are used, are applied, and all of that. So for this immunofluorescence, basically you have the direct immunofluorescence rather than what indirect. Uh, so for the direct one, people still call it primary immunofluorescence. So people still call it secondary immunofluorescence. Still the same thing, okay. So immunofluorescence, first of all, and an overview is that it's a powerful technique. It's used to detect specific antigens in a biological samples, and you are using what fluorescent label antibodies. So there are two main types of um, immunofluorescence that we have: the primary and the secondary. Or the primary one is say direct, secondary is say indirect. Okay. So primary one uses a is um, the direct one uses a primary antibody that is what directly conjugated to a fluorescent dye. Okay, so you can see that what the antibody is direct. You understand? It provides quick and specific results. It's commonly used to detect viral and bacterial infections in tissue samples. How about the secondary or indirect now? So the indirect one. We say that it uses an unlabeled primary antibody, it binds to the target antigen, followed by a fluorescent labeled secondary antibody. So it's like what? You are attaching an antibody to another antibody before you bind it to the target uh, antigen, you understand? So it offers high sensitivity due to signal amplification. So whatever signal is dictated usually increases the volume or stuff like that it's widely used in autoimmune disease diagnostics and research applications so additionally immunohistochemistry is sometimes considered a really related technique that combines what immunofluorescence with tissue section okay. so that's it for the types of immunofluorescence uh, that we have